What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at my absolute favorite roguelike. We covered this a couple of years ago, and people seem to like it. Uh, this game is called Rogue's Tale. Uh, this is very much a traditional roguelike. In the meaning of that is that it very much sticks to sort of the pretenses that were put out by the original game Rogue. This is a very difficult game, and this is a game that expects a lot of you as a player. Uh, this is a game that you have to sort of like intrinsically understand before you're going to start doing good. It has rules, and if you follow those rules, you will do a really good job, and you'll continue to advance and get better at it. But if you don't dedicate yourself to kind of learning the rules of the game, you're going to have like a bad time. So anyways, today I'm going to dive on in, and hopefully I can get you situated so that Rogue's Tale doesn't have such a difficulty wall, and you can get through that and enjoy it the same way that I do. If after watching this, you like the game, you can look down below in the description. You can check that on out, and you can get the game for yourself. It just had a recent DLC, and then on top of that, you'll also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. So anyways, let's go. Uh, this is my character. You can actually design what he looks like to a certain extent. There's not a ton of customization, but there is some. Uh, you've got your stats that you get to allocate over here. You get like four points at the beginning of the game. I put it in 7786 because I'm going to be doing a strength build today. I've noticed that a lot of the videos that are up for this game are almost exclusively agility builds. And like, I get it. Agility builds make for easier recording because agility builds are really, really consistent. And I'll talk about why that is a little bit later. Uh, but anyways, for a strength build, uh, strength. This is your first stat right here. It's going to dictate how much damage you deal with melee weapons. It's going to dictate your hit chance with medium weapons in one hand or a heavy weapon in two hands. Um, agility over here is going to dictate how well you dual wield. It's going to dictate your attack to hit and also your damage bonus on small weapons like daggers. If you're wielding a medium weapon with two hands, it will also do the same thing. It also determines how good you are at like jumping and kind of reflex saves. Uh, we've got stamina over here, which is far and away the best stat in the game. Uh, stamina controls a whole bunch of stuff from your HP to your endurance points that you spend on special abilities. It also controls your ability to search for traps. It controls your chance to resist things. This is the stat that keeps you alive, and so I tend to go a little bit heavier on stamina at the beginning of the game than other people. Like, a lot of people will go like this for a strength build, so they get the plus one out of strength at the beginning of the game. But I feel like the beginning of the game is random enough. Like, so this game, you're gonna die randomly to things that are not your fault from time to time. It's just a part of the game, and that's part of its traditional roguelike roots. Uh, but putting a little bit of extra into stamina, I feel like helps that extra survivability at the end, at the beginning of the game. Because if you can get to like level 9 or 10 and you've built your character well, chances of you dying drop precipitously. Uh, and so like that stamina helps you get there. Uh, we've also got charisma, which is your spell casting stat and also dictates the buy and sell prices at the shop. Most people use it as a dump stat unless they're doing like a very specific magic build. But even in that case, you're going to need to survive the early game where you have no magic in order to get to magic. And so usually what you'll find is that people still go with a normal stat spread and then they fix their charisma later. Uh, we've got heritages on these sides. Uh, every there's, So there's like 150 achievements in this game, and they're called heritages. And they are all kind of difficult, actually. Like, most of them are, they require considerable work. But if you can do them, they permanently make your character stronger. And so at the beginning of the game where you have no heritages unlocked, that is the hardest the game will ever be. And then from there, it only gets easier as your resistances, your HP, your damage gets permanently buffed. Uh, so anyways... I've unlocked some of these. I've got the sword and the buckler. I've got a leather armor set that I start out with. I've got a potion of antidote, which is probably the best starting item because a poison can absolutely wreck you in this game. Uh, I've got a potion of healing, just in case we get ourselves into a bad situation. And then I start out with a pet as well. So let's dive on in. Uh, we'll talk about the basic controls here because I do think that you need to have a grasp on that if you want to play the game successfully. You can click to move. Uh, sometimes selection can be weird in this game. Like, I've gotten myself killed by wanting to click a monster that was right here, but, like, I was slightly upwards, so the game countered it as me clicking the wall, and I kicked it, and then he killed me. Like, sometimes selection can be a little odd in this game, but you get used to it as you play it more. Right-clicking on yourself will make you rest until all of your health and stamina is back, so long as your hunger and your thirst are satiated. And then left-clicking on yourself will make you bypass one turn. At the bottom of the screen, you can see your stats. We've got Strength, which has a plus zero. We have Agility, which has a plus zero. We've got Stamina, which got a plus one. We've got Charisma, which has a minus one. We've got our Physical Resistance, our Fire Resistance, our Ice Resistance, our Lightning Resistance, our Poison Resistance, and our Disease Resistance. And you'll notice it's divided up into two separate numbers. One is for your head, one is for your body. So every time you're attacked, there's two places you can be hit. Your head 
or your body. A head is automatically a critical hit that can cause all kinds of like side effects and bad things. And so having good head defense is usually a good idea. Uh, if you get hit in the body, this is just flat damage reduction right here, effectively. And so anyways, other keys that are important. Uh, pressing the W key will allow you to swap weapon sets. You can have two different weapon sets. Pressing the D key will allow you to drop things on the ground. E will allow you to use things or equip them. S allows you to search your surroundings for traps. And W, I'm sorry, Q lets you jump so that you can move two tiles at a time in exchange for one stamina. Which can be nice if you're playing ranged characters to get a gap because everybody else moves one space, you move two spaces. So, let's start the game on off. At the beginning of the game, there's a couple things you need to know in order to increase your success chances in this game. Uh, leveling up. So what a lot of people do when they start this game off is they kill everything and they try to level up as fast as possible. Uh, that's a mistake in my opinion. Don't do that. Apparently that's the entire dungeon. I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, so if you're killing everything, this game has level scaling and it begins around level 7 or 8. In the sense that your enemies will begin to get new abilities that make them much more difficult to defeat. You want to forestall that for as long as possible by getting as little XP as possible as you move through the game until you have a gear set that you're really really happy with and so like I try to avoid hitting level 7 or level 8 until I'm immune to fear and I'm immune to curses that's usually like my first goal is to get to there because at level 7 level 8 that's when enemies start to get curses that's when they start to get fear and you can just get one shotted by a curse or you can get feared and just CC to death it becomes like you really got to manage your resistances in this game uh, we completed the dungeon so whenever a dungeon generates it can be between one and seven floors this one was one floor, and so we're already, like, done here. It was that easy. Uh, we got 20 XP for completing the dungeon. I'm going to put my stat point into strength. Uh, leveling up in this game follows a sequence. So level 1, you get nothing. Level 2, you get a stat point. Level 3, you get a talent point. Level 4, you get HP. And then it repeats from there on level 5. You'll get a stat point. Level 6, you'll get a talent point, And then it just repeats forever until you hit level 20. Um, we are satiated right now. We did get, so we stepped on this trap right here, and that gave us dungeon fever. Uh, dungeon fever can kind of be a problem, and so I'm going to wait it out and see if I die. Uh, dungeon fever is bad because every single turn you make a stamina check, and with that stamina check, any status effect in the game, if you fail it, can be spawned on you. And so that could be anything from, like, coughing yourself to death to just getting, like, your strength nerfed. And so I'm just going to hang out for a minute and hope that it goes away. It did indeed go away. Uh, we had to make two stamina checks in order to make it go away, but our stats are still pretty nerfed. And so we're going to want to hang tight until all these debuffs fall off of us. Uh, the dice system in this game is very, very simple. It's a 2d6 system. So every single time you do anything, the associated stat is tested with a dice roll of two six-sided die. If you score a seven or higher, you are successful. If you score a six or lower, you are unsuccessful. Uh, so you can see how the bonuses in this game actually really, really matter. Like a plus two is like a big deal because it considerably increases your chances of getting a 7. And so anyways, that's kind of where we're at. I'm just kind of waiting for this all to fall off. There we go. It finally all fell off. Now I need to eat food because we're, like, starving to death because Dungeon Fever apparently makes you really, really hungry. It's kind of a bummer we didn't get a whole lot done in this dungeon. I wanted to explain more things to you, unfortunately, and I'm not going to get to do it because the dungeon was so short. So this is the town. Inside the town, you can reset the dungeon if you've cleared the previous dungeon, or if you've sealed the exit to the dungeon. I'll talk about that a little bit later. You can rest in the inn. That will give you a free reset of the dungeon no matter what. So if you go down into a dungeon and there's way too many monsters and it's basically suicide, always keep like 50 gold on you so that you can come back, rest in the inn, reset it real fast, and give it another go. Uh, when you reset the dungeon, it's going to give you a choice of quests over on this side. I wouldn't worry about quests too much until you're like familiar with the game. Otherwise, some of the some of the quests can be really, really difficult. There's a potion on the ground right there. You can right-click on things to pick them up. Another nice interaction with the UI is if you hold down out, you can loot things that are at your feet. Uh, so if you get disarmed, that's how you pick your sword back up, in case you were wondering or you've lost a character to that. Uh, there are going to be people that play this game a lot, and they're like, why aren't you searching every time you take a step for traps? Don't you know you can get one-shotted? I do. I do know that I can get one-shotted. The thing is, I find that mechanic to be really, really tedious. So I tend to just ignore it, and then once I get my first talent point, I get a talent called Keen Eye that allows me to auto-detect traps, and then I just accept that my character is going to die until I get Keen Eye. Uh, it's not that hard to make a new character in this game. It takes about 15 seconds. 
Uh, the time investment is not that bad. That's a friendly archer right there. If we talk to him, he can teach us archery skills. But we're not doing an agility build. That's a magic shrine right there. You can learn different languages so that you can cast out of books and off of scrolls. Uh, there are a couple different nodes that you can spend your talent points at. Ow, I stepped on another boobity trap. Feels bad. My leggies. My leggies, they're busted. Oh my god, it's an orc and a rat. Alright, well the rat is dead, and the orc is busy right now fighting with a snail. So, on hitting level 3, we've got a talent point now. I'm very, very interested in using that talent point. Ooh, a plate cap. I'll take a plate cap. Yeah, let me get that. It's a little bit better than what I have right now. Uh, so this orc is going to come after us, and there's not going to be a whole lot I can do about it. Oh, he killed my dog. What a jerk. Oh, I have a. I was like, why is he not counterattacking me? Uh, I've got a heritage that makes my weapon at the beginning of the game spawn enchanted, and I've got a sword of paralysis. And so, like, I was like, why is he not attacking me back? Like, an orc this early in the game is usually like a significant threat. And like, I was like, all right, he's not attacking me. What's going? What's what's going on here? I was par I was chain paralyzing him. Uh, all of the OP stuff that the AI can do to you, you can also do to the AI in this game. So, like, everything is fair. Uh, we'll open this on up, and I'm just going to take it kind of slow. We need some water, so I'll drink that real fast. There's a gravestone. There's a heritage for seeing every single name on a gravestone in one run. And I think the bonus is actually pretty good, so I've been trying to get that one completed, but no such luck so far. I didn't see all the gravestones that I needed on, like, a full, like, 12,000 turn level 20 run. And so I guess there's a lot of them out there. Uh, there is a booby trap right there, but it doesn't look like there's any enemies in this area. That right there is useful later on in the game. It's not going to be useful for us right now. Ooh, a plate helm. Nice. I'll put that on. We don't have a dodge bonus right now. Uh, wearing plate mail completely and totally negates your dodge bonus, but we don't have one. So, like, plate mail is actually a decent early game option for us, provided we don't fall into any water pits. Oh, nice, dude. We've got a, a training thing right there. It's a bummer because, like, we could learn a couple of warrior skills right there that I actually think would be pretty good, but I usually like to use my first talent point on getting Keen Eye, uh, which I think is the best talent in the game, personally. Uh, let's see. Did I miss the stairs? I must have missed the stairs. Where are the stairs at? Oh, there's the stairs. I did indeed miss them. So you see this boulder over here? Uh, if we go down these stairs and there's like a hundred devils down there or like some challenge that we can't complete, you have one turn to go back up the stairs before you get locked out from going through the stairs. And so we can take this boulder and we can push it onto the stairs and it'll seal the dungeon. We'll be able to go back and reset the dungeon and try again. And I, I definitely recommend you play this game like a coward at the beginning. That orc could be a problem. I don't know if I want to fight him. I'm going to do it. I've got a Sword of Paralysis, dude. Like, the Sword of Paralysis is going to hard carry us on this playthrough. It's actually really, really good. I'll take his sword. I'll take that potion. Items in this game, by default, are unidentified. That means that every single item that you pick up, there is a significant chance that it might be cursed. Uh, and so cursed items modify your rolls and give you bad luck, basically. And so, you know, don't put things on until you've identified them, unless you're really, really confident that you understand the mechanics of the game. Another booby trap, dude. I have stepped on so many bear dude who's hunting for bears down in a dungeon. Bears don't live in dungeons. I mean, I guess it might be a cave. I don't know. Uh, but we've lived this far, so let's just keep on carrying on. Uh, that snail is in the way, so I'm going to have to kill him, unfortunately, even though I don't want the XP and I don't want to overlevel myself. Those are fine arrows, so the one exception to the rule that all items are unidentified by default is ammo. Uh, ammo is identified by default, which actually means that ammo carries value better than, like, most of the items in the game because you can just take them back up to the surface and sell them. There's another orc. Okay. I suppose I'll fight you. Hopefully I paralyze you, though. If I don't paralyze you, I'm going to have a bad time. Orcs are dangerous in this game. Oh, those are bats. I don't like that. That might actually kill us. Uh, bats get, like, double turns. So, oh, no, and our paralysis is not going off. Okay, healing potion! I want to kill you. Please die. Oh my god. I am deeply and intrinsically unlucky. 
Yep, there it is. We missed all of our attack rolls. What are you going to do? It's possible that one of our items was cursed on us, and it was giving us like a minus one to our attack or something like that. It's impossible to tell, though, until I went back to town and identified everything, and we didn't have any money to identify anything. And so if you're having like a very, very skimp run where you have no money, uh, randomness tends to affect you a lot more than it affects characters that are like flush with cash the second they get in here. Uh, that's a dragon hide helm. I will take that and put that on. It's got an extra dodge modifier. It's not going to be... That good. Ooh, chainmail. Nice. Take that. Yeah, throw that chainmail on my body. That chainmail probably would have saved us in that last fight. Apparently, we got a one-level dungeon again. I really wish that would stop happening. It's really, really bad for keeping my level low. But that's life. I've got a sword of strength. Oh, dude, we started out with a plus two. Nice. Hell yeah, brother. Well, that's going to help out with a plus two to our attack roll. I feel like we're in pretty good shape. Uh, let's go ahead and enter it. Nope, that's a lava level. I hate this. Uh, we don't have any money to reset the dungeon either, so this is problematic. Uh, normally, I automatically reset any level that has lava, because every time you walk across these bridges, there's a chance they'll break, or snails will just sit on the other sides of bridges and stuff, and, like, there's no way around it. Um, Alright, snails, I need you to go away. I need you to clear out, like, right now. And so anyways, lava levels, it's instant death if you fall into the water and you don't or if you fall into the lava and you don't have maxed out lava or fire resist. And so I don't normally play these levels. I just ignore them entirely and pretend like they don't exist. Uh, the orc is dead. That's good. We killed him off. My dog is standing on the loot and not allowing me to get rich. I feel very, very poorly about that. Uh, there's a giant horde of spiders down here. I don't know where my dog ran off to, but apparently he's decided that he doesn't want to be a part of this adventure anymore. I don't blame him because lava is like, no, did he kill my dog? Where's my dog at? Where'd my dog run off? There he is. Woof, what are you doing, dude? Like, what are you, what are you doing all the way over here? Like, why have you done this? Realistically, I should be jumping whenever I cross these bridges, but like, dude, I'm like the laziest rogue's tail player on earth. I promise. Go ahead and get him, woof. He's all yours. He's stuck in a bear trap. Uh, this guy right here, we could get Heroic Charge, which is definitely an ability that we need for tackling mages and archers. Um, I'd like to save my talent point for Keen Eye, though. Uh, 14 more gold right there. I'll take that. Almost enough for a dungeon reset. Getting closer. Mm, nothing down that way. You can light the torches to get one XP. Uh, I usually start doing that later on in the game once I'm established and I'm ready to rock. Uh, it's a rat swarm. Okay. I don't know where my dog is. He should really be over here. Ow. Okay. Healing potion. And the healing potion allowed us to pull through and survive. Very nice. Don't you just love utility gear? Uh, where is my dog, dude? Where is my dog and B? What is he doing? Apparently my dog is just not following me anymore. I I've proven to be a poor leader and he's not following me into this situation any longer. Uh, there's a damage digger right there. That is a pretty good piece of equipment, but it's damage, which means that its rolls get modified negatively. There's a ring. Rings are nice. Rings usually sell for good money, and there's a couple of rings that I look for at the beginning of the game that really sort of guarantee I'm going to have an amazing run. Uh, those are Oh, a chopper. Nice, dude. Uh, yeah, let's go with the chopper. So here's a fun fact about two-handed weapons in this game. Uh, two-handed weapons give you a 1.5x bonus to your attack and also to your damage uh, in accordance with your strength, in case you were wondering about that. It's pretty good. Oh. Apparently we're just going to fight with like a thousand spiders over here. Yeah, dude, it's like Spider Fest 2021 inside that room. All right. Don't love the sheer volume of eight-legged horrors that are running around, but what are you going to do? You don't get to pick the denizens of your dungeon. Um, I would like to eat some food. You can combine these stacks, too. There we go. Save some inventory space. Uh, don't fall in the water pit when you're wearing heavy water, or when you're wearing heavy gear, water pits can be sort of bad for your health. Uh, it looks like the snails finished off this guy down here, so we don't really need to worry about him. 
And we've got a helmet inside of there, so nothing truly special that we wanted to look at. Oh good, we've got a maze dungeon, and I don't have keen eye. Beautiful. Uh, so maze dungeons, I usually skip these as well as water levels. Uh, a, because these levels are a pain in the ass to navigate, but also because everything is reduced to like one tile. Um, unfortunately, you're gonna step on traps on these maps and it's gonna suck. Uh, we got an archer over there who's throwing stuff at us, but he's falling into a water pit. I'm gonna capitalize on that to run up and kill him real fast, and then I'm gonna take a nine in strength so that we now have a plus three to our rolls. Uh, that's gonna make it so that we hit most of the time, so things should be a little bit less headachey and risky from here on in. In addition, we should be dealing a lot of damage. Uh, if we can pick up a ring of carnage or whatever it is, so there's a ring in this game that allows you to reroll any missed melee rolls. It's pretty good. I like it for low-level characters. Uh, there's an amulet of ghost form, which is a best-in-slot item. Uh, there's an amulet of free action, which I think is a best-in-slot item. Uh, there's a number of things that I'm looking for. A ring of shielding uh, is really, really good in the early game. It won't scale with end game, but in the early game, poof, it'll carry. There's a little bit more money, which we could always use. I was gonna say, where'd that snail go, dude? That snail's out here zooming, bro. Uh, that thing got a double turn. I don't like that. You die, please. And that's a spike trap in my butt. Thanks for that, dungeon. You're my best friend. Nothing says best friends like spikes in the butt. All right, well, let's carry on back over this way and see if we've got anything good going on. Okay, well, there's the stairs to the next floor. I mean, I think we could pretty safely just say, like, forget this level and go down to the next one. Uh, there's a bandit right there, which kind of sucks. I don't like that. I'm gonna. Apparently, the bandit is being attacked by something. Oh, the bandit's being attacked by the dude with the spear. I'm gonna sick my attack dog on him. Oh, he killed my attack dog. Feels bad. I wish that he had not killed my attack dog. That dog was my friend. Now I've got to go straight Goku on him and just, he was my friend, and just like lose my, absolutely lose my shit on him. Uh, let's see here. I need to heal. That's what I need to do. Let's do some healing. Unfortunately, because that lava level is such a massive risk to our character, I can't go back to town. Ooh, there's plate mail. I like plate mail. I'm going to put the plate mail on for right now. That'll give us five resist, which is like... Uh, if we fall in a water pit, though, we're going to have a bad time. That's a schematic. As you get further on into the game, you'll unlock crafting recipes so that you can build your own gear. Uh, building your own gear can be really, really useful, actually, if you end up not getting the drops that you need for your build to be efficient. And so that's a new crafting schematic. Uh, that's the entire dungeon right there. So we survived our first dungeon. Uh, don't, don't, don't scoff at that. That's rare. Uh, surviving the first dungeon can actually be a lot more challenging than you would think. Uh, let's identify some of this stuff. So we got a sword right there. That sells for more than it identifies for. Identification costs 10 gold. Ah, see, I'm glad I didn't slap that armor on. It's cursed. I'm glad I didn't slap that armor on. I had a feeling, dude. There was just something about that armor that was like... Mwah, uh, uh, uh. It was sinister looking. It was looking at me in a sinister fashion, and I didn't like it. Uh, we can go to the crafting table, turn that in. We learned how to make a plate helm, so that's good. Plate helms are sick. Uh, we can identify this ring. It's a ring of shielding. Nice, dude. So what the, the ring of shielding is, in my opinion, one of the must-have early game items. Uh, it insulates you from losing. And so basically, for every endurance point that we have right here, we get a 3 HP shield. And so, like, when we start buffing up our stamina very, very soon, this is going to get up to, like, 21 extra HP to protect us from dying. Now, this ring is not going to be that good at endgame, where the enemies basically one-shot you anyways if you don't have your resistances sorted out. But for the early game, where the enemies don't have crazy abilities like that, you might just be okay. Uh, I'm wearing plate mail, and, like, I don't feel good. Okay. It's 40 to fix my plate mail. All right, I'm going to do it against my better wisdom, but I'm going to keep enough money to reset the dungeon again in case I need to. I don't like stepping into the first room and being surrounded by every evil thing on Earth. Just let them sort it out. There's something up there. And in this game, frequently monsters will fight each other. Is he like, oh, that's why he's not coming over here. Oh, he jumped over it. What a champ. Okay, a couple of daggers, a little bit of money. Um, 
We're not very good at agility, so this could potentially end our game. I'm going to take my armor off. And jump! Oh, we made it, dude. Hell yeah. Alright, put my armor back on. He already killed the other thing that was on the other side, so I don't know what we have to worry about. Uh, it looks like he killed a friendly character over here. I would actually like to wear chain mail rather than wearing plate mail. But we're going to swap over to the chain mail once we actually have a dodge modifier, and we don't have a dodge modifier right now. Uh, don't worry too much about min-maxing this game. You should be min-maxing this game. This is a game that expects you to min-max it, so, you know, don't... Don't uh, don't feel terrible about really, really, really eking out every single millimeter of performance that you can out of your gear and out of your loadout. Um, the AI is super OP, and so in my opinion, you should endeavor to be as OP as possible to counter that. I'm going to take my plate mail off, jump across. We fell into the water pit, but it's not that big of a deal because climbing out is easy. If you're not wearing 90 pounds of plate mail... I kind of use... Oh, that's not good. That's unfortunate. Uh, so, undead enemies. Undead enemies automatically cost fear, cast fear on you every time you try to attack them. We are not immune to fear right now, and so these guys could potentially be a very, very real stopgap in our playthrough that could wipe us out, like, instantly. I am, of course, conflicted about this. Oh, dude, he fell into the water keeps fearing me. Alright, so let's see if the orc tries to close the gap. Oh. He fell into the same water pit that he saw the last guy fall into. I guess there's no accounting for... There's no accounting for intelligence, I guess. Oh my god, he just hit me for 9 damage, but that's okay, because I hit him for 15. Um, none of that looks any good to me. I don't care about it. As you can see, the ring of shielding saved our life right there. That would have been instant game over. Uh, so if you see a ring of shielding in the shop, or you see a ring of shielding just randomly as you're playing the game, I highly recommend you pick it up. Uh, it will definitely turn kind of a fledgling run into at least a mid-game. Oh my god, it's chaos in here. That guy's going to charge me, so I'd rather not deal with that. There we go. Uh, we're at level 7 now, so... Ooh, he's got poison on his chopper, too. Well, then I'm glad I one-shotted him. He deserved it. Uh, let's go ahead and combine some of these rations, if we can, just to get some inventory space back. They've already stepped on the trap down there. It looks like there's a bunch of loot to be had inside of this room, so I'll go ahead and I'm not going to turn that down. Ah, wishing well. Keen eye! Yay! Now I don't have to worry about traps anymore. That's all fixed. Traps are no longer an issue. I mean, there's a chance we'll step on a trap and instantly die, but as you can see, it showed us that the spike pit was right there. It's like an exceedingly low chance that while moving around, we won't see traps and we'll get one-shotted. Um, get the gravestone real fast. Some arrows over there, but I feel like we're maybe past the arrows. We maybe don't need them. Uh, in addition, Kenai will also show you secret rooms, and secret rooms are universally rad because they have chests inside of them, and those chests will have rings and amulets and like 200 gold and all kinds of... Oh, that's not... Hmm. Hmm. There's an elemental down there. I'm not crazy sure. So because of this one space right here, I don't know if I can get a boulder over there. I can't get a boulder over there. Looks like we're shelling out to reset the dungeon. Back to the surface! I can't travel at the moment. Why? There. Uh, we're going to have to rest at the end. Hate to say it, but I feel like we're just too early on to mess around with fighting elementals. I, uh... Hey, the chain armor's not cursed. That's nice to see. Here, take this plate mail. Also, uh, take this sword. Yeah, take that armor. Take that helmet. And crafting, we can bank that right there in our crafting inventory, which is listed up here. Just in case we wanted to craft something later on in the game. We also got another schematic, so that teaches me how to make a knockout bolt. Never really used the knockout bolts. They might be great, but I've never used them before. We're kind of like overstocked with food right now. We kind of have like a lot of food and water. 
Like, that's okay. I'm not upset about it. Like, being able to eat and slake your, you know, hunger is good, but... Um, we might want to try and enchant our armor a couple times to see if we can get immunity to fear. I'll take strength. Immune to sleep. Eh. Damn, dude, we have a plus five to strength? That is revolting. That is actually pretty absolutely beastly this early in the game. That's a pretty ghastly amount of strength. We're getting kind of lucky with our rolls here. Uh, check that out. Anybody else down? Ooh, treasure chest. Nice. There's an amulet inside of it. Maybe it'll be an... Oh, my God. Okay. That was uh, extra strength painful. Didn't enjoy that at all. If I could get, like, a campfire so that I can learn heroic charge... I feel like we'll be... So I need to get Heroic Charge, and once I get Heroic Charge, I need to... Oh my god. Okay. So that room is not for me. Um, I neglect this room, and I pretend like it doesn't exist. And I hope you get bit by a spider. Uh, but yeah, once I get... Well, I need to get Fear Resist so that I cannot be feared. And then once I have that, we need to start looking for an Amulet of Free Action. I'm going to put that into stamina so that we get an extra temporary HP, and that'll also boost up our HP a little bit. Another plate mail right there. It is worth like 50 gold, but I don't want to hike it out of here. It's so big and heavy. Uh, that's a celestial cowl. Some of the, so there's basically, there's a special version of every single armor in the game. Uh, so for plate mail, I think it's called Ebonheart. For leather armor, it's called Dragonhide. For robes, it's called Celestial. Uh, they tend to sell for a lot more. I don't know. I think they just give you one extra dodge bonus, in all honesty. I think all the special named versions just give you an extra dodge modifier. Um, where are the stairs? Oh, there were no stairs because there's a door down here. I didn't see this door. Ah, uh, Fire Elemental. All right, let's light this candle, baby. I feel ready to deal with elementals. I feel like I can do it. I feel like I'm ready. Previously, I would have said that I'm not ready, but like our character is definitely mid-game approved right now if we can get fear resist and curse resist. Oh my god, it is absolute chaos out here. Really wish I hadn't walked into whatever this is. I'm just gonna hang out in the hallway. My sword got damaged too, so it might break. Okay. I'm just gonna stay inside my little kill tunnel right here. And pretend like everything is alright. Tell me that you're alright. Everything is alright. Oh, please tell me that you're alright. Aw, oh, dude, he's fearing me. It's okay, he's blocked off like he can't really move. There's also a heroic guy down here, so he's a friendly. We might be able to do something with him. Oh my god, there's a treasure vault. I'm so happy for the treasure vault. Hmm. It's concerning. I've been blinded. I've been blinded by poisons that were inside the chest from me trying to pick the lock. Not great. Uh, probably could have been better, but luckily we have an antidote, so no biggie, no harm, no foul. Uh, there's a tome right there. That's worth a lot of money. I'll take it. Uh, looks like there's nothing inside that little treasure room right there. Nothing inside that one. Uh, there's a bookcase inside of here with some scrolls and a potion. We actually have a lot of goodies on us right now. We may be able to weasel our way into some resists. If we sell all this stuff off, I think we'll have a decent amount of money. A bigger shield would not be a terrible idea either. I'm a fan of that idea. That's got a block modifier of 5. Our current shield only has a block modifier of 2. And so we're getting a plus 5 now as a modifier to blocking ranged attacks. So we pretty much can't be hit with ranged attacks at this point. Um, I'm going to fall back over here and wait for my shield to come back. Bro, if you could just do me a solid 
and stop poisoning me. That would be great. What is that? A paralytic poison? Okay, I'm gonna wait for it to fall off. Our stamina is pretty good. Basically, every single turn you make a stamina test, you have to roll seven or higher twice in a row for the poison to go away. And we've got a plus two to our our resistance roll, so chances are we'd be, hey, there we go. Uh, crushing blow is good. I'll take that instead of charge. You press C to go to your crafting menu, or your casting menu. All your abilities will be listed over here, sorted by the different schools of magic, and then you just press the hotkey that you want to put it on. So now I've got crushing blow. Uh, I didn't talk about what crushing blow does. Uh, so it does an extra D3 of damage for every point of strength modifier, so we do an extra 5D3 damage, basically. Uh, that's gonna be like a beef lord of a. It's it's we're gonna hit hard. It's gonna one shot just about everything at this point in the game. Hey, I jumped over spikes on my first try without impaling my bum bum. Ooh, secret door. I don't care about traps. Oh, the secret door loops back around. To, oh, and there's also more treasure rooms. Hold on, I like treasure. Let me guess. This guy probably teaches heroic charge, right? Oh no, he's a cleric, weirdly. I thought he was a warrior because he had a sword. I mean, he's a cleric, he teaches turn undead, which is actually pretty good, uh, but we don't know how to cast magic because we're illiterate, so meh. These things happen. These things do happen. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and eat some food, drank some drank. I wanna try out Crushing Blow. It only did nine damage, what? Oh, it's because my sword is damaged. I need to go back and repair my sword. I'm going to use this sword for a minute so that I don't break my sword of strength. I don't want to break my sword of strength. It's good. I really hope that... Uh... Oh, dude, I fell into the pit of water. Now I'm all... Ow! He critted me with a rock. Oh, my God. He did, like, 14 damage with that rock and then promptly dropped his weapon. Apparently, I'm just disarming everybody out here. I'm going to pick my sword back up. We'll kill off this dire wolf real fast. There we go, dude. We are surviving some attrition right now. I'll tell you what. I think there's an achievement that I need to do for eating meat while wearing a red shirt. Well, I did not know that that was going to happen. So apparently when you complete that achievement, um, it summons a cave bear. So, um, the bright side here. My character now starts with an enchantment on his shirt. The downside is I'm about to be eaten. Oh, <gasps> we survived. No way. We were definitely not cave bear ready. Like, we just lucked out of that fight so hard. Woo! So happy! <laughs> we killed him with a crit, too, because he dropped a bear skin. Uh, crafting materials in this game usually only drop if you roll a crit on the final hit. Oh, my. I don't even know what to say about that. I think I might be the luckiest boy in all the realm. That right there, uh, some serious domino action. A seal of silencing on that buckler, huh? It's tempting. Makes you immune to silence. Only really matters if you're casting a lot of spells, but... It's going pretty good. This is Rogue's Tale. Hope you guys enjoyed it. This is my most favoritist roguelike in the entire world. I've played this game way, way, way too much. And typically what I've noticed is that people, when they talk about this game, they're like, this is the most random game on Earth and they get really, really frustrated by it. Uh, but, like, the game... I'll, I'll, I'll show you something here. Uh, the game comes with a guidebook and literally tells you every single item, every single spell, every single monster, every single stat, every single everything in the game. 
This is a game that requires some studying. If you don't feel like studying, go watch On Fire. O-N-P-H-Y-R-E. He's one of the better players in this game. He's really, really good at it. He's usually frequently on top of the leaderboards. And so anyways, go watch him play this game and you will quickly find out that like most of the time when you die, it's your fault. Like, yes, there are odd cases where you die and it's not your fault. Like, for example, that cave bear spawning on me. I had no idea that was going to happen when I completed that achievement by eating meat with a red shirt on. However, most situations uh, you can either avoid or not participate in at all as long as you're smart and you manage your money appropriately. Uh, so anyways, Rogue's Tale. It just got a DLC. I wanted to cover the game again and show it off because it is a game that I've dumped so many hours into, dude. Like, so many hours into this game. Uh, I used to have it on Desura before I had it on Steam. I think on Steam I've got like 50 or 60 hours. On Desura I had even more. Like, I really, really liked this game on Desura. And so anyways, it's a great game and it continues to get larger. The developer continues to support it. You can tell that it's a passion project and it's like a, a love project for him. Uh, he just keeps adding more things to it. And so anyways, there's a lot of content here. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for hanging out with me and I'll see you when we reconvene for something hot and fresh off the indie skillet tomorrow. Bye-bye.